In this module so far, we have looked at the global problem of antimicrobial resistance, discussed the extent to which antimicrobial use in animals is likely to contribute, and outlined the context of antimicrobial resistance in humans and animals in Australia. But the question remains, what can we do about antimicrobial resistance? Well, in the first instance, there are some great control measures that are in use every day in veterinary science and animal production settings that have already driven down the use of antibiotics in animals and continue to do so. Some examples of these control measures are as follows. 1. Vaccines. 2. Enhanced biosecurity and infection control. And 3. Revision of management practices in production units. These measures work towards preventing infection and are broadly encapsulated by the term conservation. While these initiatives are not directly related to the use of antimicrobials, they clearly affect whether antimicrobials are required in the first place and are therefore a very important consideration. Let's look first at vaccines. Although vaccines are developed for specific economic diseases and there will always unfortunately be gaps where they are not available, vaccines can be useful in a number of ways. In general, vaccines are obviously used to prevent bacterial and viral infections. Prevention of bacterial infections negates the need for antibiotics to treat such infections and results in obvious direct protection of individuals and herds from the pathogen and shelter from subsequent exposure to antimicrobials. Prevention of viral infection sounds counterintuitive in terms of antibiotic resistance, but it is known that a large amount of unnecessary prescribing of antibiotics occurs for patients who have viral infections or an unspecified illness, particularly where diagnostics are difficult. In addition, bacterial superinfection is a potential sequelae of viral disease which necessitates antimicrobial prescription. Good examples here are canine parvovirus and feline viral upper respiratory tract infection. Similar to vaccines, enhanced biosecurity and infection control works to limit the number of infections and likelihood of transmission if disease or pathogen are present. There are many environments, including veterinary clinics and farms, that can benefit from enhanced biosecurity measures to result in reduced burden of disease and reduced requirement for antibiotic use. There are a number of informative online resources available to help you and your clients to make changes in these environments. Finally, revision of management practices refers to changes such as reduction of stocking density, implementation of all-in, all-out systems, and modification of weaning processes. These changes are likely the most difficult for vets to help enact or implement within production environments. It is difficult to make a case for reduced stocking density or change from flow through to all in all out systems on an immediate financial basis for producers. But the likely reduction in overall disease and subsequent reduced requirement for treatment and knock on effect to enhance growth rate are potential selling points that perhaps we should exploit when discussing options with producers. All of these measures of conservation result in a reduction in overall usage of antibiotics, reduced selection pressure, and consequent conservation of antimicrobial effectiveness. Conservation can be thought of as an adjunct to the process that is termed antimicrobial stewardship or AMS. Antimicrobial stewardship is interpreted to mean different things in different places. There are a few definitions that might help to guide us and bring to light what we mean when we talk about stewardship. The first is from Stephen Page, who defines antimicrobial stewardship as the action of taking care of a valuable resource that belongs to others. Another, reported by Dyer and colleagues, is that it is a coherent set of actions which promote using antimicrobials responsibly. They also assert that this involves promoting actions that balance both the individual's need for appropriate therapy and the longer term societal need for sustained access to effective therapy. There is inevitable elasticity to the concept of antimicrobial stewardship that varies with context and is necessarily employed and interpreted differently depending on each location or scenario. Indeed, AMS may be applied on an individual to global scale and crosses human health, animal health and also the environment. Having said that, there are some guideposts that help to describe the main areas that should be considered. 
These can be thought of as the five R's of antimicrobial stewardship. The five R's refer to responsibility, reduction, refinement, replacement and review. Let's look first at responsibility. All situations where antibiotics are prescribed are examples of the veterinarian exercising and accepting responsibility. A specific example might be the prescription of antibiotics where there is a fever of unknown origin and the client requests antibiotic treatment. Here the immediate risk assessment must account for the potential benefits of antimicrobial usage which are difficult to identify due to a lack of knowledge of disease process or pathogen driving the disease. This then needs to be weighed up with the consequence of antimicrobial usage in terms of immediate adverse impacts on the patient, including lack of ability to appropriately culture an organism if a focus of infection is subsequently found, and longer term impacts such as the potential for indiscriminate broad regimen antimicrobials contributing to selection pressure. Contrasting immediate benefits with long-term impacts is difficult to do and even more difficult to communicate, but it is not possible to appropriately accept responsibility without attempting to bridge this chasm. Reduction. Reduction refers simply to reducing the use of antimicrobial agents wherever possible. Reduction can be assisted by the conservation strategies that we saw earlier, including enhanced infection control, biosecurity, vaccination, targeted treatment of individuals and also the reduction in the duration of treatment. Refinement. Refinement refers to refining the choice of antimicrobial based on all information on the patient, pathogen, epidemiology and antimicrobial agent. It is about selecting the right drug at the right time, at the right dose and for the right duration. It is important to appreciate that most available resources that recommend duration of therapy are not guided by strong evidence and recent randomized controlled trials in humans have provided strong evidence to support shorter treatment durations for many bacterial diseases. Further study in this area is ongoing and required, but in the meantime we should be careful to avoid the common misconception that a minimum duration of treatment with an antimicrobial is required to prevent the emergence of resistance. A thorough understanding of the pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics of the drugs that you are using is imperative. Remember, the pharmacodynamics refers to the effect of the drug on the body whereas the pharmacokinetics refers to the effect of the body on the drug. Replacement. Replacement refers to the replacement of one antimicrobial with another whose benefit to risk balance is superior to the original. It is also termed de-escalation. An example of replacement might be the commencement of treatment of intra-abdominal abscessation in a horse initially with procaine penicillin and gentamicin in combination but replacement with more narrow spectrum or in this case a lower importance rated choice such as trimethoprim sulfonamide once the culture and susceptibility is returned and there is evidence of susceptibility to this replacement treatment. Often these replacement medications may be older drugs that may otherwise have been overlooked. And finally, review. This refers to the regular review and improvement of any and all antimicrobial stewardship initiatives. This can be done through periodic review of practice specific policy, uptake of stewardship best practice by staff, educational resources for staff and clients and an audit of number and type of cases with antimicrobial resistance since the last review. So that brings this module to a close and we have gone some way to answering the question what can we do about antimicrobial resistance? By looking at control measures that are already in use to reduce antibiotic use in animals and outlining the 5 R's approach to antimicrobial stewardship. Many of the concepts that have been covered in this module will be covered in greater depth in other modules within this course.